Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Osha. Let's start episode 462 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by William. And he writes, I want to learn Carillon of Westminster by virtue, which I purchased score from you. I can play pieces like the tedium of like Tedeum of Langlais, uh, Dupre Cortes and Litany. Um, do you think I would be capable of learning this piece? Uh, I practiced one page for a week or two very slowly. Uh, I'm working now on relearning eight little preludes and fugues. I don't want to take on that much. Do you have any suggestions? Does it help to practice Vernon piano? I have to start very slow practice to learn a piece. If I know it well, I can play any speed. I'm 79 years old and still have a full-time cathedral job. Thank you for any advice. Bill Herring. Bill is our long-time customer. And um, he recently purchased Carolyn of Westminster by Vierne. And That's a wonderful piece to have on your repertoire list. I didn't imagine he was 79 years old, actually, and still has a full-time capital job, which, which is really wonderful. Amazing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, well, I just talked recently with my neurologist, you know, and she told that there are no strong evidence nowadays, you know, that that people who started to play musical instruments when we were children, well, don't have so much chance of developing dementia or Alzheimer mm-hmm. or you no know, other neuro- neuro- neurological diseases, or if we have them, we sort of have, you know, a milder version of them. Mm-hmm. Because all these, you know, neurons in your brain, you know, the coordination that requires, you know, musical instrument and probably music itself too has, you know, a very good effect on, on, on your brain. Well, you're right, Osha. So you, we probably shouldn't be surprised that, you know, Bill is 79 years old and still holds the full time in the organist position. It's wonderful. I think he should be an inspiration for others. Definitely. Um, you're never too old to practice organ playing, I think. True. And uh, set yourself a goal, maybe a lofty goal, maybe unreachable a little bit goal, but but definitely go like that to learn Carlon of Westminster by Vierne is something that that uh, Bill could certainly um, have in his in his uh, short term plan. I think. Well, and I think to answering his question, I think it would be very helpful to play this piece on the piano. I think it's helpful to play any piece by Louis Vierne on the piano. It's very helpful. 
when I was working on his third symphony, I played it on the piano a lot. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. Um, piano sort of uh, is um, tricky to play because the sound fades and you have to be really precise at your uh, depression of the keys. Uh, with the organ you have to be also precise with releases of the keys, right? And resistance of the mechanical piano action is um, sometimes even uh, more difficult than mechanical organ, I would say. And obviously... It depends on what kind of you know organ you play. Mm -hmm. And obviously... Uh, almost always more difficult than electronic organs. So if you know you play on the piano, you give you know work for your muscles, yeah. which I think is a good thing. It's a bigger workout for your finger fingers, I would say, and palm muscles. Um, but usually people you know have uh, more is. Uh, easier access to the piano than, you know, to the organ, so that way if you can practice on the piano too, you know, you can practice, spend more time practicing. Maybe you have piano at home, so you don't have to walk every time, you know, to church to practice. And you can, you know, work or do at least some some work at home. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm learning a piece like that, I would probably aim for one page a day, but uh, at the age of um, Bill, I think it's normal to take it one page for a week or two weeks even, right? To to slow down and take it really uh, at a comfort comfortable pace. True. Right. Um, then. Then this piece, I mean, you will still learn it, maybe not in 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 a month or so, but you will still learn this year. But of course, when you are learning a new page, you know, every week, let's say, you need to repeat the previous pages too. Yes. Because otherwise, maybe, you know, when you will practice your last page and you won't be repeating, you know, other pages, you might, you know, start all over from the beginning and to relearn it. Of mm -hmm. course, it would be easier when learning, you know, it completely from scratch, but but still. Exactly. And I think, um, I think um, it's really great to sometimes practice from the last page. Uh, take the last page, then two last pages, three last pages, starting from the, from the ending, don't you think? Yes, that's good too. Especially if the beginning is easy. True. Um, in this particular piece, I think beginning is not so easy because you have those double six right away, double intervals, and your right hand still needs to work pretty hard. But, you know, since you have learned it, I think this f sort of formula will keep going throughout the piece. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, definitely Bill can uh, put this piece on his uh, lists of things to learn this year, I think. Sometimes, you know, learning music like this and playing on the piano, I love to sing the pedal part while playing, you know, on the piano, the manual part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if he has a full-time cathedral job, then imagine how would his congregation appreciate one day to be able to hear this piece uh, as a postlude, for example. Yes, I think it's a wonderful postlude. It might not come, you know, soon, but after a number of months, sure. it's possible, I think. Mini recital, maybe a couple more pieces. That would be great. Like we have uh, in our cathedral of Vilnius, every every Thursday during uh, summertime, we have um, 
series of lunchtime recitals of 20 to 25 minutes long and tourists tourists and visitors of the cathedral really love this place and it's always full attended very well and you only have to play like something like three pieces all together yes i think such recitals are very good especially for tourists mm -hmm. because usually if you would play like an an hour long recital probably not many tourists would stay you know throughout it and it would be very distra distractive you know if people would start you know to to leave or you know to ch change between themselves in the middle of your playing Alright guys, we hope this was useful to you, please send your wonderful questions in the future, and remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your essays, courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right, as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vida Santosha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and... 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.